My, hi, I'm here with Craig Stanford. He's a professor of evolutionary biology here at USC. And we're uh, getting his opinion about what we're doing here, handing out the origin of species with a special 50-page introduction by Ray Comfort. What do you think about what we're doing, Professor Craig? Well, you know, The Origin of Species is one of the most profoundly important books in history of science. I'm sure you know that. All right, it's, it's the beginning of a series of ideas that really dictates our understanding of the natural world. So I think if you were handing out the origin of species, and it were actually the origin of species without significant edits, changes, and forwards that are intended to give people a completely opposite view of what the book is about, I think that would be wonderful. Now you understand we didn't alter any of the text of Origin well, of Species. There's a 50-page introduction that gives the creationist view, right, right an intelligent design view, um, but we didn't alter the text at all of right. Origin of Species. Right. Well, when I say alter, what I mean is if you hand out a book to kids here, and they take it and read it and they read a forward or an introduction that's full of ideas that equate Darwinism with Hitler, Stalin, etc. I, I just, to be honest, I think that it's a shameful thing to do. I think it's an intellectually dishonest thing to do and I think it's bad for our kids, our society. I mean, here, here's what I would say is scientists do not run into churches and try to get up in the pulpit and say to folks in the congregation, look, Believe in God if you like, believe in Jesus if you like, but we have natural laws that run the natural world, and that's the way it is. And when we die, we return to dust, right? In fact, that is in the Bible. We don't do that, because I think we have respect for a religious faith-based point of view. So to me, this is evidence of you guys not having that same mutual respect, and that's why I walked up to your table and was ticked off, because I knew you were coming. I didn't know you were coming today. You thought we were coming tomorrow on the 19th. Well, you know, I hadn't really put even that together. I'm just busy, but I just saw you guys here. And, you know, my point is just simple as that, that, that I think that there, there ought to be mutual respect. That's all. I mean, I'm from a religious family, and I think that people can run their lives and their values based on a God-based view of the world. But, but, when people start saying that the earth is six days old, you know, was created in six days, and they start promoting values that are based on some view that Darwin was, you know, in, somehow way, in some way... Uh, you know, re representing the same views that Hitler or Stalin. That's absurd. That's absolutely absurd. Let me ask you this question. If you died today, where do you think you would go? If I died today, I've thought about this a great deal. Um, and if I died today, I would return to the earth from whence I came. Do you believe that we have a soul, that there's an afterlife, that there's a heaven or a hell? I certainly do not believe that there's a heaven or a hell or an afterlife. I believe that we may be spiritual creatures, and that's n not in any way necessarily related to a church view. Uh, I was raised very religiously, as I said, but I don't think you need church, organized religion, or God. I mean, unfortunately, you know, you guys, when you say God, you're usually talking about a Judeo-Christian God. So if I say, well, what about Hindus? You know, Hindus don't have a creator. Hinduism does not have a creator. Hindus believe in a whole pantheon of gods. And unfortunately, creationists tend to reject that as a bona fide... Hey, Linda, you see what they're doing here? We should be telling everybody, because people think they're coming tomorrow. Yeah, so we can be out here with some of the real stories, so... So let me ask I you, mean interrupt, but that do you think you've kept the Ten Commandments? I'm sorry? Do you think you've kept the Ten Commandments? Well, I mean, whose, whose Ten Commandments are these? I, I, I know this, that studies have shown that born-agains and atheists have about the same likelihood to commit adultery, murder, robbery, and rape. That religious beliefs don't provide a foundation for morality any more than a person who's a non-believer has their own foundation of morality. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever told a lie? Um, I would say that in my life, white lies are about as common as they would be for any of my Christian friends. So you've lied, okay. So what does that make you if you told a white lie? Uh, I think we probably have to argue about what a white lie is. I mean, you told me you're coming tomorrow. So, <laughs> so well, no, we didn't say that. Okay. It was advertised. We just changed it and didn't tell okay, people. Okay. All right, we never advertised it. Okay, okay. So would you call somebody who lies, even a white lie, would you call them a liar? Uh, and what is the point of your question? I just want to find out if you've ever told a lie. Uh, I, and if you're intellectually honest enough I think that I, to admit. I think, that I'm, I think I'm an honest enough person that I have been as honest as I can be in life, and like almost everybody else, yourself included. Have you ever told a lie? Of course, everybody. Here have you ever stolen anything? I've never stolen a thing. A penny, a pencil, a cookie, a paper clip? Never. Too long on a coffee break? Never. Don't drink coffee. Okay. Don't take breaks. Two more. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Well, he's your God, right? So yes. If I, if I say, you know, if there, I have three children, and I've raised them to be skeptics. I've raised them to believe that the natural world runs by its own laws, to, to make sure they know that we should be humble in the face of these natural laws. You don't need to invoke God for that. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Ever said, no. oh my G-O-D, well, or worse? Well, just as I said, I, I honestly don't remember if I did or not. I don't swear very often, but to me, taking God's name in vain is... It's kind of a silly concept, you know. It's called blasphemy. Do you think you've ever done that? 
I have never blasphemed because I don't think there is a God I would be blaspheming against. Jesus says even if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery already in your heart. Have you ever done that? I would never do that. Absolutely you've not. You've never looked at your, your entire life? I'm, I've been married for 21 years. I'm a good person. Uh -huh. And being a good person has nothing to do with being a good Christian whatsoever. A good Christian can be a very good person, I'm not saying that. But you don't need to believe in a particular point of view religiously to be a good person. You ever hated anybody? I don't hate, no. Gotten angry? Of course I get angry. Yeah. I the Bible calls I anger and... I think the best of all people get angry in their lives. They, Absolutely. I, I think you saw I was a little angry when I walked in. Oh yes, you were, you were. I'm not angry in a big personal way, just kind of angry like, oh my God, you know, oh my God. Oh, you so you have blasphemed, you okay, go. so listen. I said, oh my God, what are they doing here? Yeah, so, so check this out. The Bible calls hatred murder. It yeah. starts in the heart. Yeah. Anger's murder, look, look. right, right here. So listen, listen real quick, Craig. By your own admission, you said you're a good person, but you just admitted to me that you were a liar, a blasphemer, an adulterer at heart and a murderer at heart, and you have to face God on Judgment Day, the oh God you don't goodness. believe. Are you sure you're getting If God, thing? if God, if there was a God, and if he judged you by the standard of the Ten Commandments... I'll be in great shape. Are you being great shape? I'll be in great shape. Oh, so Absolutely would you will. be guilty or not guilty? Absolutely will. You know, we had somebody ran for president last year claimed she was a big time... Christian. I'm asking you. Ran for vice president. Okay. And then what was she into? She had a teenage pregnant daughter. She was a liar. You know, I just thought, come on, is that how about you? Is that Christianity? I have no, I have conducted myself in a way that somebody like that person from Alaska w would be in awe of. I think. Craig, you just admitted to me you're a liar, a blasphemer, an adulterer at heart, not, and a murderer at heart. Not in any way that you, you have to face. You, you have to face God on Judgment Day. If big if, listen carefully now. You're a professor. I know you're yes, used sir. to speaking. So if God judges you by the Ten Commandments, would you be guilty or not guilty? If. Oh, no. Those who will judge me are those whose lives I'm affecting on earth, on earth, okay? Those whose lives I'm helping or hurting, and hopefully I'm not hurting anyone. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you, I know you don't believe this. I know you don't believe this, but let me tell you. You've admitted to breaking four of those commandments. On I'm Judgment Day, hold on, on oh, well, okay. a second. Okay. On Judgment Day, you will be found guilty. You'll end up in hell forever. I know you don't believe in that. But if I told you, or you told me that you don't believe in gravity, jumped off that building, and because you can't see it, mm -hmm. You say no. you wouldn't get hurt, you would. That's a funny, so, anal that's a funny analogy because what I say to my students is, do you believe in evolution? First day of the semester. Biggest theory ever, huh? 85. It's a crazy myth. And you, you're listen, teaching listen, those kids of yours a crazy myth. 85% say, yeah, I believe in evolution. I say, wait a minute. This is not something you can choose to believe in or not believe in. If you jump off that building you just referred to, and you say, I don't believe in gravity, you're still dead. <laughs> exactly and right. You, you can say to me, we're here because we don't accept the reality of evolution. I say, you know what? You don't have to accept it. It is. It right. just is. Okay, now I have to go. Sorry. Okay, one second. One second. You don't believe in heaven or hell. I understand that. I understand that. So just like your analogy, my analogy as well, jumping off that building, the f fact that you don't believe in heaven or hell makes no difference about where you're headed. The Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake Show of fire. I'm a no thief. I'm a scientist. Show me evidence. Do you have a conscience? Show me evidence. You have a conscience. I know it's inside my head. Show me what's in the natural world around Why does a conscience, why does a no, conscience no, no, no. only speak no. about moral OJ issues? Simpson had a conscience too, right? I'm oh, not seeing your argument. I'm not seeing your argument. No. Show me evidence. That's what I'm Craig, saying. Craig, okay. nice thank you. Thank you. You have a great class today, okay? Bye-bye.